In this video, I'll be talking about the implementation of method of lines using forward Euler. So this is the script in example 8.5 of the textbook. Uh, the code consists of main part, which is basically uh, the forward Euler implementation. And then it includes a function down there to calculate the right hand side only. This is pretty much like what we did in chapter six. Uh, I just want to go over it one more time using now the vector notation of what was discussed in the last movie of method of lines part one. So the first part of the code is as usual the declaration part. You declare all the variables y right hand side u so these are vectors time del t del x t1 time max i rho and and a step i step so some of them actually may not be useful i just copied i guess from the text so this is just a declaration nothing so special about that part we activate the spreadsheet that we have to read the input value the input variables the first input variable is n, which is sitting on cell 1, 1. Uh, we redimensionalize the y vector. So our y vector has n elements. This is exactly equal to the notes that, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Mm. OK, so right here. So let's look at this. This is what we discussed in part one. Um, the y vector we're talking about is right here, and it has n elements from u1 to un. And the right hand side also has n elements. That's why we have y from one to n and right hand side from one to n. And n is the number of discretized points within the domain. That does not include the boundary points. So let's look at that again. If this is the discretization figure from the left boundary to right boundary, we have n intermediate points plus two boundary points. So total n plus two with n points in between. All right, so let's go back there. Now we're gonna assign delta T from spreadsheet, maximum time to want to calculate. Again, we're gonna read that from spreadsheet. These are all uh, given in the spreadsheet in column one, row three, row five. So you can, I'm sorry, from column one, uh, from row one, column three, column five, column eight, and so forth. All right, so after you read the X, then you calculate number of steps, which is the maximum, which is the maximum time that we have divided by del T. So this gives the total number of time steps that we have to cycle through. This is the current time which is uh, read from that cell. So we're gonna start from row three. Uh, so this is our choice. I just set it to row three because the first two rows are the header and uh, the input variables in the first row. So we're gonna start from row three. Again, this is very common. We're gonna clean up our mess from last simulation or from last run. Next is we're going to read in the initial values from the active sheet. So this is from row three, which is exactly that row. So we're going to read in all the values into Y. This is going to be our initial values. Now we're going to call the right hand side in a loop with N cycles. Every cycle is for one time step. If you want to look at time equal del T, so that means I step is one. If you want to look at the second time step, you have to cycle this two times. If you want to look at t equals n delta t, you have to cycle through this, through these steps, n times. So let's see what happens in every time we cycle through this. So first we're going to call f calc. So this f calc takes del x and y and n. So these three are inputs y is a vector recall that and then we're going to calculate or output right hand side so let's go over the fcalc see what that does 
this is f calc function down here. Again, these are input variables, and on the right hand side is the output variable. All we do here is basically we are uh, writing the right hand side of our matrix equation. So let's go over there. This is what we discussed in the in part one. Right hand side of these equations are actually written in that function. So that function does nothing but returning these in elements on the right hand side. So let's look at the first one. The first one is minus 2u1 plus u2 divided by del x squared. So that is exactly written here minus 2u minus 2y1 plus y2 divided by del x squared. These are from row 2 to row n minus 1 and then that one is the last one. So these this line is within this loop because from row 2 to row n minus 1 they're very similar. The first the first row and the last row are different. And the reason is the first row we had initial we had the boundary condition on the left. If you remember the first equation had this u0 and we had to substitute 0 because we wanted to use the the left boundary condition. Now the last equation is also different because we're going to use the right boundary for n for u n plus 1. That's why the first and the last equation these are different from the other equations from 2 to n minus 1. And for, because of that reason we put this in a loop from i2 to n minus 1 and then the first and the last equation we're going to calculate them separately. So let's look at the last equation. Last equation according to this line is y n minus 1 minus 2 y n plus 1 over del x squared and this is exactly what we had over here. It's u n minus 1 minus 2 u n plus, well this was 1 if you recall, divided by del x squared. So this is exactly repeating these equations in f calc function. Alright, so once we return from this back to the main code, we're going to bring the right hand side with us. So let's go there. This is where the function was called. After this line, now we have access all to all right hand side. So the next step is cycle through the Euler steps. In the Euler steps, where exactly cycling through each element of this matrix form. So this is like a v vector at n plus one is equal to v your ve y vector at n plus one is equal to y vector at time n, which is the previous time step, plus del t times right hand side. So this by itself has n equations hidden in there. And this loop is actually cycling through those hidden elements. So this is why old and this is why new, or basically this is why at step n, this is at step n plus one. All right, so this part is basically the implementation of forward Euler. And the rest of the code is reflecting all these values onto a spreadsheet as an output. So we're going to calculate the time. We're going to increment it by delta t every time you cycle through this outer loop. Okay, so our time is going to be incremented by delta t. We're going to go to next row. We're going to write in the time. We're going to write in the um, value of the previous cell from column two. And this is because if you go to, let's go to our uh, spreadsheet. This is our spreadsheet. Because the second column right here all include our left boundary, every time step we go to new row, we're going to actually duplicate the last element of the second column onto next row because these are all fixed. Nothing changes on the left boundary. Similar is for the right boundary if right boundary is fixed. Let's say in example 8.5, the right boundary is fixed as one. So every time you go to next, next row, you're going to duplicate, you're going to copy the value of the last row in this column to the next row. These are all one, right? So let's go back to the code. This is to duplicating the left boundary, and this is to duplicate or copy pasting the right boundary. So we're going to copy the row minus one onto row, and this is to copy uh, row minus one to row again, but this is in column two. 
this isn't the last column. So this is the, the left boundary, that is the right boundary. All right, so at, by this time, we output it, we output all the values onto the Excel sheet. And next step is uh, so these these two lines, these two lines output the left boundary and right boundary. We need to also output the points in between, right? So if we look at this figure again, we output the boundary point on the left and boundary point on the right. You need to output these endpoints in between. And to do that, we cycle through this line n times every time for one of the y values. So this actually cycled through y1 all the way to yn because i ranges from 1 to n. Anyway, so you're going to output all the y, the intermediate y values onto the Excel sheet, same row. You're going to change the column only. That is it. So you're going to hit the next command. So you're going to go back and go next cycle, which is actually the next time step. Every time you cycle through, cycle through these lines, you're going to use forward Euler to calculate the y values of the next time step. This piece is again to uh, change the font and font size. And the last piece of the code is to adjust number of decimal points. So uh, all you need to do for problem two of homework seven is figuring out how to change the last element or the last boundary, the, uh, the, the right boundary, the left boundary, and basically, uh, you, need, you also need to look at how to modify these equations on the right side. So there's a little bit of change, if you recall. Only the last term, just to give you a hint, only the last term or the last equation has changed. So you're going to change only this line. You're going to change the last value on the x-axis, which is the right side boundary. And that is it. So all you need to do actually changing this line and the last line of the function. I hope that this uh, makes the problem a bit more uh, or a bit clearer. And uh, you'll be able to implement this uh, for a different boundary condition, uh, which is a du dx equal 0 at x equal 1. All right, thank you so much for watching.